get my shoes and out the door. Fuck, I'm a last six, seven, eight, feeling Hello, BYWG Podcast Tribe. This is Dr. Noah. For the month of October, we have an awesome book of the month and product of the month that I'm incredibly excited to share with you all. As a reminder, all the links for the book and product of the month will be listed in the show notes and iTunes, in our weekly newsletters, and on our website at www.beyondyourwildestgenes.com at the Listen Now tab. Our book of the month is The Hidden Cause of Acne, How Toxic Water is Affecting Your Life and What You Could Do About It by Melissa Gallico. I just had the incredible opportunity to interview Melissa on the podcast, and you can find this interview at www.beyondyourwildestgenes.com on iTunes, Spotify, or YouTube. The product of the month is Energy Bits. Energy Bits are 100% organic spirulina and or chlorella algae that are paleo, keto, vegan, and non-GMO. I've been taking them, as well as my family, for nearly a month, and I personally enjoy the extra added boost in nutrition and energy they provide. Watch out for our interview as well regarding the Energy Bits. You can find out more information at energybits.com, that's E-N-E-R-G-Y-B-I-T-S.com, and get 20% off forever using the code capital B, capital Y, capital W, capital G, B-Y-W-G. Enjoy the upcoming podcast. Hello and welcome back to Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast. My name is Dr. Noah DeCoyer and I am your co-host. Today our guest is Scott Nelson from Juve, J-O-O-V-V. I've been interested in photobiomodulation or light therapy for a long time. Uh, Other guests that have been on our podcast like Dave Asprey and Rob Wolf recently had Scott on uh, discussing this topic. So it nudged me to make my first purchase and my first Juve purchase and, you know, that basically uh, created the impetus to have you on our show. So here we are. How are you today, Scott? Awesome, Noah. Thanks for uh, having me on the show. Looking forward to the discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just run through your bio and then we'll get started. Scott is the impetus, power, and energy that sets Juve in motion. His ability to metabolize information quickly makes him an irreplaceable asset to our company. And when it comes to leading all of our commercialization initiatives, he's without a question the best. The best two words to describe Scott are efficient and personable. Prior to co-founding Juve, he spent his entire professional career in leadership positions with some of the largest medical device companies in the world, including Medtronic, Covidian, Boston Scientific, C.R. Bard. Scott is best friends with his wife and soulmate Liz and loves spending time with his four kids. Fun fact, in his spare time, Scott is also the host of the MedSider Radio, a top-ranked medical device podcast. Uh, all right, man, Scott. So, how about a little bit of a ba- your backstory? I mean, flush it out a little bit, and then the uh, the origin story of Juve too. Uh, sure. That, I was gonna say uh, first that bikes me on way better than I, uh, but I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> um, but to answer that question, um, I've spent my my uh, you know as you just mentioned, I, I spent my entire career in the traditional med tech space. So before move before relocating Juve to Southern California, we were based in Minneapolis. Um, you know, otherwise known as the the Silicon Valley of the the medical device space. So you've got you've got the the, the major players there: Medtronic, Boston Scientific, um, St. Jude, which is now Abbott, et cetera. And so that 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 was my previous life. Um, and and to, and to drill down to that a little bit further, um, I was uh, I've always been in the cardiovascular space, um, primarily the peripheral vascular space. So dealing with products like uh, um, vascular balloons and vascular stents, atherectomy catheters, uh, thrombectomy catheters, et cetera. That was kind of my world for the past 15 years uh, before before starting Juve. Um, so, yes, yeah, tr- very, very traditional uh, med tech uh, or medical device um, background. But what brought um, sort of the, you know, to, to get – you know, to circle back, I guess, I guess, to your question regarding Juve and the, and, and the origin story, when we are, when we are based in Minneapolis, um, my wife as well as her sister uh, purchased red light therapy pack, a red light therapy package um, from a local spa uh, in Minneapolis that was, um, that, that was advertising um, uh, the, the benefits of red light therapy, et cetera. And this was back in 2000, this was back in, actually, it was late 2014 or early 2015, um, somewhere in that, in that time frame. Um, so not, not nearly as much probably uh, knowledge about light therapy as there is um, uh, when we're recording this podcast here and, you know, towards, towards the, the end of, of 2018 here, mid-2018. Um, but they, they actually uh, experienced quite a few benefits from red light therapy. Um, they went consistently. They, they were probably going, you know, four or five times a week, you know, traveling across town, 
um, you know, getting, getting undressed, doing the full body, you know, red light therapy treatments, et cetera. Saw some really great benefits, but, you know, as anyone that's listening to this, this show can probably um, testify to, that, that gets really onerous um, and expensive, you know, having to go to some, some location that many times per week. Um, it's a significant, you know, time commitment um, and, and, and financial commitment. Um, and so my, my wife's sister, Melissa, um, um, wanted, to, wanted to, to, to do this sort of thing at home. And so that's, that's what started um, the search kind of for a, a product that, that um, delivered a, a fair amount of power uh, but was ideally kind of a full body type of product, red light therapy product that you could ideally use in your own home. And so she, you know, after doing a fair amount of research, Melissa is a great researcher, and so she, you know, after doing a fair amount of research, um, kind, of, kind of discovered that there really wasn't anything available. There's a lot of handheld products, um, you know, small little handheld products that can treat, you know, a small area of your face, something like that, but nothing really geared for your, for your whole body. And so she kind of tasked her, her husband, Justin, who's an engineer, um, to build some type of prototype. And so, you know, while they were kind of playing around with different prototypes, um, you know, we were having some, some light conversations just because you know, therapy kind of falls, falls kind of as a, as a therapeutic sort of falls in the arena of med tech. And, you know, I, I was pretty skeptical when they first, um, when they first, uh, you know, um, brought up the idea of, of, you know, creating some sort of red light therapy product. Um, I wasn't even a believer in the, in the therapy at all, just because it sounds kind of woo woo. Um, but, but unbeknownst to me, you know, as I, as I started, you know, peeling back the, the layers, um, the layers of the onion, uh, so to speak, there, um, I was, I was quickly blown away about, about how much published research there is with respect to light therapy. And in the, in the world of academia, it's referred to as photobiomodulation. Um, and I, I was blown away. I mean, I, I come from, um, you know, the traditional med tech space. So, so clinical published peer reviewed clinical data is pretty important. Um, when evaluating therapies, and I was just, I was like, I, it was pretty shocking how much, how much um, research there is with respect to light therapy. So, kind of a long-winded answer, but that's sort of the origin story of Juve. And so we were the, you know, um, we after a bunch of R and D efforts and you know trying to trying to um, create different prototypes, we ended up launching our first product back in early 2016. Um, launched several different um, sized models of that first sort of iteration of 2016 and 2017, and then most recently um, rolled out a, a sort of a, a completely redesigned Juve in early August. Um, it's a, an R&D project that we've actually been working on for you know close to two years, um, really almost since the, since the original launch of our of our first device. And so, uh, pretty pretty proud to get to this uh, to get to this point. I'm um, pretty uh, pretty happy with uh, with the way it's gone so far. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, I, I love some of the recent interviews you've done with some of the people that I love to follow. And uh, that, like I said in the bio, that's kind of what sparked me to purchase my first, uh, my first view. So when, what, what, let's, for the audience, what exactly is photobiomodulation or, or light therapy? Like what, what's the science? What is it? What are, what it, can it potentially do? And what are the differences between other light therapies out there? Sure. Um, so, so that's I, I don't I don't want to get too too long winded. So feel free to follow you know <laughs> ask some follow up questions. But we'll we'll start sort of high, and then um, certainly we can we can go a little bit deeper. But the way I always like to describe light therapy sort of to the to someone who's who's hasn't heard of it or, or isn't overly familiar with it is um, it, it's sort of like I mean we're all familiar with how our bodies metabolize different macronutrients. So we understand that, or most people understand that if you eat you know carbohydrates, um, typically there's some sort of like insulin response in your body. Um, same thing with, you know, fats and proteins. Our bodies respond differently to those macronutrients. You know, we kind of all, all sort of understand that at a high level. Well, light or different wavelengths of light, um, are, it, it's sort of similar. So our bodies respond to different wavelengths of light during different parts of the day. Um, and sort, sort of in line with sort of the natural sunrise and sunset. And so each wavelength of light, whether it's a blue light, green light, red light, um, that's all in the visible spectrum or, um, or you know, outside of the, the, the visible spectrum. Our bodies just respond differently to each of those wavelengths of light. And so um, that's sort of light therapy at, 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 a, at a very high level, just kind of understanding that our bodies, um, our bodies um, just physiologically metabolize these different wavelengths of light in, 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 in various ways. Um, so that, that's kind of, at a, at a, you know, an explanation at a high level. But more specifically, when we talk about light therapy or photobiomodulation, most of the clinical research, um, at like a, a very, very large uh, percentage of the clinical uh, research, um, shows that very specific wavelengths of light actually have a unique um, 
a biological impact at the cellular level. And th- those wavelength, those unique wavelengths of light, or those, those spe- specific wavelengths of light, are red light, so visible red light, and then invisible near infrared light. So not far, not like not like a far infrared sauna, but near infrared light. And so um, those wavelengths, actually red and then infrared light, um, have the, the 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 unique ability to not only penetrate our our tissue, our skin tissue, um, but they also um, um, help the mitochondria in our cells produce more ATP uh, or, or more cellular energy, and so that's the core mechanism of action. We can kind of get into into the in, you know later on in the discussion get into actually how that works, but in essence, these speci- very specific wavelengths of light um, help our cells, um, uh, our mit- the mitochondria in our cells produce more energy, and because of that core mechanism of action, you get. A wide range, a very very wide range of benefits. Um, it almost sounds kind of like a QVC late night, you know, uh, infomercial. Uh, but the benefits are really really wide ranging because of that uh, that core mechanism of action. So you you, you see every, everything from skin health uh, to muscle recovery to joint pain uh, um, relief, reduction of inflammation, enhanced cognitive benefits. Um, and, and and so on and so forth. In fact, uh, Dr. Sarah Valentine, or you know. She, Known as the, the the paleo mom, she just sent me a, a study actually just yesterday. Um, now, granted, it's it's very early research, but showcases the fact that um, these wavelengths, red and the infrared light, actually help promote healthy gut microbiome as well, which is another unique another unique benefit of of red and near infrared light therapy. So the benefits are very very wide ranging, but it all kind of comes back to that core mechanism of action, and that these wavelengths of light help uh, induce uh, the mitochondria in our cells to produce more uh, energy. Yeah, and, and if for anybody who's following anything within the biohacking, paleo, keto realm, everything now is focused on the mitochondria. Everything. <laughs> the whole, the whole ball of wax. So that's, I guess that's gotta be extremely exciting for you guys. Yeah, sometimes it's it's hard to sort of differentiate in, in, in the noise too because you're you're right. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, you know therapies being promoted um, for you know mitochondrial stimulation or activation of mitochondrial mitochondrial health, et cetera, et cetera. Um, great to see, um, but yeah, red and infrared light. That's the that that is the core mechanism of action. You get a lot of you got a, you get a lot of secondary um, effects too, um, like you know enhanced gene transcription, better cell signaling. Um, the production of, 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 um, cytokine, more, you know, enhanced cytokine production, et cetera. Those are all secondary benefits, but it all kind of stems back to that, that core, that core thing, uh, which is, uh, you know, in, uh, a lot, you know, allowing our mitochondria to function the way they were supposed to. My God, I have, I have so many questions. Well, let me just start by a little <laughs> bit of a story that you might hear, and you can comment or not comment. But um, my, my, my wife just recently brought my son to the dermatologist because he has a couple scars. He plays hard, and my wife has a couple scars too. And at that time, I had just bought, I just ordered the juke just to the house. It was just like three, four weeks ago. And she brings it up to the dermatologist, and what do you think the dermatologist says? That's, that's yeah, a, I can only really imagine. Yeah, that's a, that's a waste of time. And my immediately <laughs> thought was, like, I wish I was there. Because this guy is totally a fool because the research is is unbelievable out there. And two, if he knew how to monetize, if he could figure out how to monetize it, which obviously he's behind the ball because people do monetize red light therapy, uh, he would not be saying that it's a waste of time. So that was the very fu- a very frustrating and angry uh, moment for me and uh, felt pretty bad for this guy. And he's probably a really successful dermatologist as well. Yeah, that's that's surprising because of of all the subspecialties of medicine, dermat I mean light therapy has probably been is probably more familiar to you know to, to derms um, at least here in the in in the U S anyway. So that's a little bit surprising, um, but but at the same time not surprising. It's it's actually something that we we struggle with a lot. You know when we get specific questions from from customers about you know does let, let light therapy treat this or or that, and while we always have to you know play that card carefully. But you know, one of our default responses, you know, is is, is you know, it, it, as always, please consult with your your trusted healthcare provider. But the sad reality is that most you know most healthcare providers are completely unfamiliar with the science um, that supports uh, red and near infrared light therapy. So it's kind of a it's kind of a uh, you know um, a catch twenty two in the sense that we we tell them to consult with the healthcare provider, knowing full well that they're probably not going to get the response they need. 
Yeah, and then for those out there who are listening, I, I highly encourage you to go to the to Juve site. It's, I believe it's www.joovv.com, and they, they have an incredible set of videos on all these specific different conditions and the link to the research articles. I mean, so there's, there, there is a wealth of information out there, and the Juve site itself is a really good place just to learn about the red light therapy, the Juve itself, and what it can do to help you. Uh, some I have some specific questions about about the wavelengths. Now I I absolutely love sun. I thrive uh, in the summertime. I shrivel up and struggle in the winter, <laughs> uh, being right outside of New York City. Uh, obviously the sun has the sun has every spectrum of light, right? Every wavelength I would assume, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Uh, so b- being out in the sun, do you 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 get some of the similar benefits that the Juve uh, provides to you? You, you do. And, and that's actually, you know, if, if anyone listening to this wants to sort of, um, you know, take the next step without making any sort of financial commitment, you know, when it comes to light therapy, I'd say, you know, first step is just try to get more sun. That's something that we always, always recommend is, is just try to, try to get your, try to get into the sun more often. In fact, um, there's a, there's a data point that suggests that, you know, most Americans, um, spend 93 upwards of 93 percent of their time indoors, you know, in, in sort of the, the modern world that we live in, um, which is pretty shocking. Um, it sounds almost like a, a distorted uh, statistic, but the reality is, like, when you start to think about most of most people's daily routines from the time you know you get up in the morning, have breakfast, get ready for work, you know, do the morning commute in a car or train or subway or whatever. Spend you know spend eight or nine hours in an office environment indoors <laughs> under artificial light. Come home, especially in the winter time, the sun's already set. I mean, it becomes very true. You know that that we're um, we we just simply do not dot, do not spend enough enough time in natural sunlight anymore. And our our biological systems haven't. I mean, that that's a relatively new change. Um, and our biological systems just haven't haven't evolved or haven't adapted to that type of environment. And so, so yeah, I mean, the the, the, the sun is a great and free, you know, uh, um, um, you know, sort sort of hack that everyone should be should be getting more of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, now the the unit itself, there, there's it's not like a sauna. There's no heat that comes off this. This is just like a light or a light bulb, correct? And not a light bulb, but you know what I mean. It's just it shines on you, correct? Yeah, correct, correct. And, and just, just anecdotally, kind of back to the sun, the sun topic real quick. You know, my, my youngest son, we've got four kids, my youngest son who's, um, who's five, I guess, at the time that we're, we're just, we're, we're having this chat. Um, we lived in Minneapolis, um, which doesn't get a lot of natural sun just because of the, the, the climate. Um, and, and, uh, you know, he actually struggled with, with some eczema issues on his face. But what's interesting is that, you know, moving, since moving to, to California and getting more natural sunlight, and of course, in conjunction with, you know, um, most of the time, daily, daily light therapy treatments, you know, that, that's, that's completely, uh, completely healed. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty dramatic when you look at, at sort of before and after pictures. So yeah, I mean, just, I wanted to kind of briefly share that the sun is a, is a powerful and free tool, but, um, but yeah, specific to our, you know, our, our devices, um, yeah, we, our, our devices deliver red and near infrared light therapy and, um, which is often confused. And we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but it's often confused with, with a, a far infrared sauna, uh, just because, you know, most, most people aren't. You know, they hear infrared and they think near and, and far infrared is the same thing. Um, it has nothing to do with distance, uh, you know, some, some type of distance you are from, from the product, whether it's an Asana or, or a device like ours. Um, it's, it's the wavelength of light. So, so near infrared wavelengths of light um, kind of fall in the, in, generally speaking, kind of in the, the uh, 750 to about 1,000 nan- nanometers. That's, that's near infrared Light and then far in mid and far infrared light um, kind of um, extends from you know, roughly about uh, you know a thousand nanometers all the way up to, to twenty thousand uh, nanometers. So it's it's a really really broad spectrum when you talk about infrared light. But mid and far infrared light, the reason um, sauna you know good quality saunas deliver far infrared light is because those those wavelengths um, are are very good at generating heat. You know which is the whole goal of a sauna is to induce heat stress on your body. Uh, and you see the resulting benefits, you know, very similar to kind of um, – the benefits are very similar to like cardiovascular exercise. So sauna is a great therapy, just different mechanism of action than what we're talking about when it comes to photobiomodulation and light therapy. And and that's that's probably one of the most common questions we get. And unfortunately, you know, there's some there's some companies that don't do the, the, the best job at trying to help people understand the differences uh, between the two. They're both great therapies, but you can't – it 
you, you can't deliver effective light therapy or effective photobiomodulation and heat at the same time. You know, it's kind of like um, it's like weight. You know, trying to do a deadlift and run a marathon at the same time. You don't. They're, they're both. They couldn't be. They can be both. It can be good forms of training, both, but you have to do them sort of ind- independently just because the core mechanism at- mechanism of action is different. And so, yeah, saunas are great. Um, bar and red saunas are, are, are ideal for generating uh, generating the heat that you need to, to see the benefits, whereas with light therapy, um, most of the, the overwhelming uh, amount of research suggests that red and the near-infrared um, uh, ideally kind of in that, that mid-600 nanometer range and then the uh, kind of the mid-800 nanometer range um, – are, are are the wavelengths that are um, are, are clinically proven to um, to have a, a a biological impact? Excellent, excellent. Now, so now, just a one quick question: Is there any is there any research showing that like SAD or seasonal affective disorder can be uh, helped by the Juve or some product that's similar to Juve? Yeah, yeah. I I would say I would argue that um, there's there's more evidence that suggests bright white light. Um, uh, okay. that does help with, with seasonal affective disorder more so than red and near infrared. There's just more data that, that shows that, but, but there, there are definitely a handful of, uh, of published studies that, that do showcase the fact that red and near infrared light does, um, uh, does improve SAD. And actually that, that's one of, um, you know, if we were to create like a word map of all of the customer reviews um, for for our devices, uh, the, the the idea of like mood enhancement or or I I I just simply feel better, um, that that would that would show up a lot in that in that word map. It's actually one of the one of benef- one of the benefits that that most people notice. You know, they they may buy a device or invest in a light therapy device for muscle recovery or you know testosterone production or, or what have you. Um, but that is a, a very, very common, you know, um, additive benefit is sort of like the, the, most people just feel better, you know, after light, uh, light therapy treatment, which can be hard to quantify, um, but it's, it's a very real thing. And there's a handful of studies that, that do suggest, you know, strong, um, strong sort of mental, um, mental, or mental clarity benefits when it comes to these wavelengths of light. Yeah, that, that would make sense for sure. Now, do you mind if I ask you some basic usage questions? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, uh, number one, like optimal treatment times. So, so that that's a so that that's a that's a, that's a great question. It largely depends on the power of the uh, of the device. Um, and so that that's one of the things that you know whether you buy our our product or invest in in a different light therapy device. Um, we're certainly not the only players in town. It's always it's always um, important to look at at the power delivered from the device. We're not talking about watts. That are that the that the product consumes. So unlike a you know say a 250 watt heat lamp, right? That consumes a lot of power, but does it doesn't deliver a lot of power in the form of irradiance. Um, and so um, it's it's important to, to look at delivered power. Um, and that's that you know most researchers um, will use a metric called um, irradiance, uh, usually in the form of milliwatts per square centimeter to measure the effective you know, output intensity or output power of a light therapy product. And so um, I say that because it's just, it's helpful. It's kind of like going to shop for a car. Um, and you, you kind of need, you know, if you're interested in, in like something that goes fast, you obviously need to know the horsepower of the engine, right? And I'm certainly not a car guy, but that's a easy, sort of easy way for me to understand the fact that light output or output intensity uh, in that, you know, it, using the metric of irradiance is, is very important in terms of trying to figure out how long you need to use a product. And so we, we designed our devices at the surface um, of our products. The irradiance um, is, um, it, it kind of depends on, on, on exactly where you're measuring, but um, generally speaking, when you take an average um, at the surface of a device, it's, it's over 100 milliwatts per, per square centimeter, which is, a, you know, a, a, very, a very high-powered device. And so with our, our products, because of that power output, we gener- generally speaking recommend about um, – Standing about six inches or so uh, from the device, or, or, ha- or placing the device about six inches from the area of your body you want to treat, um, and then each treatment time should be around uh, around ten minutes or so, roughly speaking. So six inches away from our our, our products for about ten minutes per treatment area, 
and that will result in about um, kind of depends on 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 your your individual size, but generally speaking, about thirty to 40 joules of, of energy, which is a very clinically relevant dose of energy. And so six inches at 10 minutes is kind of our, our general recommended treatment time. You can go a little bit longer than 10 minutes. Um, I, I, I would probably say that anything past 20 minutes, you may not see a whole lot of additive benefits. Um, you kind of you hit a, a point, a, you sort of a law of diminishing returns. Instead of going longer, I would probably suggest just doing multiple treatments per day. Um, so splitting those out. So, you know, maybe one treatment in the morning, one treatment in the evening, or, you know, and if you're, if, you know, if you want to, <laughs> if you really want to, uh, you really want to, uh, you know, sort of optimize, optimize your treatment, maybe one, one in the morning, one midday, and then one in the, one in the evening. Um, but, uh, but yeah, at a high level, it's about six inches from our device for about 10 minutes per treatment area. Yeah, that, that answers my next question. How close do you need to be? Uh, next question is, do you, um, do you need to keep your eyes closed? Yeah, so that's that's a great question. So so our devices are, are uh, class two FDA cleared uh, as part of that um, as part of that submission to FDA. There's a you know numerous uh, numerous testing, um, including a lot of safety testing. And so our devices are are um, have passed photobiological safety testing, so completely fine to to look at. Um, that's why we actually don't include eyewear um, with our with our products. Um, in fact, there's a lot of um, there's a fair amount of published research that 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 showcases the fact that these wavelengths of light are beneficial for uh, for retinal function, um, and so we actually recommend you know keeping your eyes open during the light therapy treatment. Um, now, now ha- having said that, it you know the, you know our devices are, are very very bright because of that power intensity. Um, so if you do have a hard time like you know looking at the device, you know we recommend just kind of closing your eyes for the first you know, several minutes of the treatment, um, and so the, the rods and cones in your eyes will, will, will adjust to the, to the brightness of the light over time. Um, but, but yeah, we, we generally speaking, we, we recommend trying to keep your eyes open during the, during the treatment because it is beneficial for, for your eyes. It, it would make sense considering the eyes have, like, the highest concentration of mitochondria, I think, than, than anyone yeah. in the entire body, right? Yep, yep, and, and, and your, um, there's several uh, 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 glands that are, you know, are attached um, to, to the retina, and so you get, you get hormonal uh, benefits, you know, when receiving these wavelengths of light through your through the retinas in your eyes. So, yeah, and, and, and anecdotally, kind of going back to vision, you know, my, my wife um, has, has worn glasses, I think, since she was like eight or nine years old. And for the past, uh, what, three or four years after, you know, consistent light therapy treatments on a, you know, most of the time on a daily basis, her vision improves, you know, every year <laughs> that she goes to do her kind of her annual annual checkup. So that's anecdotal. It's an N of one, but there is some evidence that suggests these it's, it's, it's beneficial to, to, to receive, you know, these wavelength, wavelengths of light through your eyes. How, how does it affect sleep? Could you do this right before you go to sleep? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it's interesting. So, so I, I, at a high level, I'd say, you know, listen, li, you know, for most people, listen, you know, kind of try to listen to your body. Um, the overwhelming majority of people actually see a lot of benefits when using these wavelengths of light in the evening, um, myself included. I, I wouldn't say like, you know, my wife, for example, is much more sort of in tune with, <laughs> with her body. I'm not, not nearly as much. Uh, I, I'm not nearly the case, uh, or that's, that's not the case with, with me. Um, but but it, that's one of the, the major benefits that I personally notice is that when we fire that on in our in our our, our bedroom at night, um, it does definitely induce sort of um, it's a calm, there's a very calming effect and it does induce uh, better sleep and there and, and once again there's there's evidence that suggests it does enhance the sleep quality. In fact, there's one study that I'm I'm thinking of off the top of my head that that um, um, the subjects were, I think, women's women, professional women's basketball players, and I believe it was a, a participant size of like 15 to 20, so not huge, but enough to showcase, uh, you know, some sort of um, statistical difference. And across the board, using red and near infrared light therapy on these on these women, uh, bas- these professional women basketball players did did enhance better sleep quality. And so there's that's just one study. There's others as well. Um, in fact, there's some evidence that suggests these wavelengths of light actually um, help produce more. Um, melatonin too which we all know is, is needed um to to help with with uh with with better sleep and so yeah these, these wavelengths are great um to use before bed in fact if you really want to optimize your light therapy treatments um we, we would suggest either um especially during part times of the year when you don't you know that you don't you're not it's 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 harder to get act you know it's harder to see the natural sunrise and sunset we actually suggest doing these doing these uh, light therapy treatments in the morning and then in the in, in the evening to to mimic sort of the natural sunrise and sunset. 
Yeah, I intend to do that. Like I've mentioned a couple of times, I purchased my first juve, but I think my shipment got delayed one week. So I thought I would have it today for our interview, but I do, I'm getting it Monday. Which I'm very ex- and I'll be able to track my sleep because I have an aura ring and I know what I sleep and what my deep sleep and what my REM is. So I'll be able to track that pretty closely, which should be really interesting. Oh yeah, no doubt. That's awesome. Um, my next question is: is uh, you have you have, the new ones are modular, correct? So you can buy the smallest one and kind of buy another one. It'll kind of hook into it, and you can kind of build. You could start small and kind of build out, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's probably the, the – there's there's other other differences as well with our new devices, but that's probably the big change. And so historically with our with our, our, our previous versions, which were great products, they just um, – there was three core sizes, um, you know, basically small, medium, and large um, for, uh, you know, for, for, uh, for, for practical purposes. But uh, with our new devices, you're right, that the biggest change is the fact that they're now modular. And so just kind of similar to Lego blocks, um, you, can, you can build out a full-body system over time. Um, and so you can start. You can start. Start with. We have two two core sizes now. Uh, we call the call them uh, the mini and the solo. Um, either one you buy, you can actually build on build on to either one. So they're completely module. And so um, you can definitely build out a. They all connect together, and so you can build out a system um, over over time, a full body system over time, which is which is pretty cool. Do they do they only connect on the bottom or on the sides as well? They. They connect. Uh, they physically connect um, on the bottom, so they stack on top of each other. Okay. Um, but in terms of connecting and controlling, you know, say you were to, you know, uh, build out a four-unit system over time, um, there's two ways to connect the power. So you can use the optional Bluetooth that's built into each device and control the entire system from one device or, or our app. Or if you're not a Bluetooth fan and wanna, you know, don't don't care for that that sort of technology. Um, you can we we include a hardwire pairing kit with every um, every system too, so you can actually pair them together via hardwires, and that way you know the devices don't don't emit any Bluetooth um, at all. And so there's a couple different ways. So e- either way you do it, you can still control the whole system from from one device. That's that's just brilliant. And I think my final question on just usage is, if you have let's say you get the mini juve and you're you know you, you're using it basically on your face and your upper torso, let's say. Uh, d- does do the cells in your feet get any benefit, or is it really targeted for the area that you have it on? Yeah, it, it's primarily targeted. Um, so, so whatever area of the body you're trying, we recommend that area, you know, be you know roughly about six inches away from the device. Now, having said that, even and and more so, even with like our solo or our full body systems, you do get systemic benefits. By exposing more of your more of a broader surface area of your of your of your body to the device, just because of the of the microcirculatory system that's in our skin, um, you do irradiate. You know, you're you are irradiating blood over a surface area, and so you do get some systemic benefits um, from you know the, the 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 broader you know the broader uh, that you go in terms of, of treatment size. Um, but but generally speaking, though, you're going to get more. You're going to see more efficacy. Um, when you're when the area of your body you're trying to treat is directly in front of the the device. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, is there anything that you think that you should that you need to talk about that we didn't touch on that that is crucial that I just overlooked or didn't talk about? Uh, we we covered a lot of the a lot of the the, the main concepts that, you know and and for anyone listening I, I I would say you know if you if you're interested in light therapy and you've heard people talking about it want to give it a try you know but but. You know, you're you're up against the up against the you know budget ramifications or, or or budget issues. Just try to get more sun, like we kind of chatted about before. I mean, that that's totally free, and it's something that e- even you know being being you know deep into this into this the, the game of light therapy, so, so to speak, is something that I have to personally be more intentional about. You know, it's just so easy to get you know sucked into work behind a computer, and then the entire day goes by, and you haven't spent you know I haven't spent any time outside. You know what I mean? So I, I would say you know, definitely be more intentional about that but then you know if you want if you want to go even further or if you live in an area or if it's just hard to get you know sun on, on that that consistent of a basis uh, and want to invest in the light therapy product we covered kind of the most of the, the key topics look for look for something that delivers the right wavelengths of light you know so ideally red and then near infrared light um i in the range of kind of the mid 600 nanometer range and then the mid 800 nanometer range um you know there's there's other there's other wavelengths that fall in that near infrared spectrum 
they just aren't clinically proven to do anything at a biological level. So look for those specific wavelengths of light. Make sure you understand the power uh, delivered from the device. You can get benefits from a, from a low-powered device. It's just going to take you a lot longer. And so if something's, you know, 20% of the power, um, you know, it's going to take you, you know, that much longer to, 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 to receive a clinically relevant dose of energy. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, when it comes to light therapy. So wavelengths and, and output intensity, those are probably the two biggest when it comes to, uh, when it comes to choosing a device. And of course, there, there, there are other things to consider like warranty and, you know, how the product was manufactured and all that stuff, but that's getting into the weeds. But, um, but yeah, th those two things, just make sure you try to understand those two things, um, wavelengths, um, specific wavelengths, and then the output intensity. Uh, and you should be good to go in terms of trying to fi find the, the, the device that's best for you. Yeah, one other quick question, and I don't, I don't know how well you can answer this question because you guys are relatively new as a company. How long how long does a Jew last for? A couple of years? Like how do how do the lights like you have to replace them? Like what what are, what is the length of a of a Jew for, for the light? Yeah, yeah. So our our LEDs um, our LED chipsets um, are designed to last over fifty thousand. They're rated to last over fifty thousand hours. So I mean, if you do daily Jew treatments for roughly about 10 minutes, it's going to last you over 30, you know, 30 years. Um, so, you know, a very, very long time. Um, we do offer, you know, with our, with our devices, we do offer um, a two-year uh, uh, product warranty as well. So if anything, you know, happens within those first two years, we'll definitely, um, we'll definitely um, uh, repair the device. And then beyond that, of course, um, all, all devices are, you know, are, 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 should be fixable as long as, long as there's not too much, too much damage. But, um, the LEDs aren't really the issue. It's, it's uh, you know, the, in terms of longevity of the device, it's usually like something small, like a, like a power switch that fails, uh, that will fail faster than a, you know, than than an LED. But our LEDs in and of themselves are uh, the chipsets are last are ready to last, you know, about you know over over 30 years under normal usage. Wow. That sounds yeah. Uh, that's all. Awesome. <laughs> all right. So fi final question I ask every one of our guests. Um, from waking to sleep, what is your daily rhythm? I, my daily in terms of what is, what is my daily yeah, routine? Like, yeah, kind of yeah, like? yeah, like what do you do? Like people have our, our audience has really appreciated uh, learning. You know what really successful people do uh, uh, daily? Like like what is their routine in the morning, midday? You know, and it could be in, in depth or as as small as you want to explain. But I, I love asking that question. Yeah, yeah. So, so my personally, what my my typical daily routine is is I'll wake up usually around five thirty or six. Um, at that point, I try to I try to either go on a longer walk um, or a um, get get sort of some some light cardiovascular activity in, um, and that that way I'm getting I'm, I'm typically seeing at least here in Southern California I'm typically seeing the sunrise, which is which is um, you know great to 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 get sort of the the benefits that come that come with the morning the morning sunrise. Um, then that will, um, you know, after that, I, I, I always kind of experiment with different types of sort of like intermittent fasting. Um, and so sometimes I'll wait to eat until, you know, noon or one o'clock, something like that. And then, you know, um, uh, eat between, you know, try to try to consume most of my calories between about one and six. Um, right now though, I'm not kind of following that. I'll, I'll usually eat a larger, you know, a larger breakfast, um, you know, around seven, seven thirty or so. And that, that sort of kicks off my work day. I'll go hard um, until probably about noon or so, um, then uh, then break and try to actually get some get some sun, some some midday sun, um, and then um, then come back and kind of kind of finish you know try try to finish off the work activity. And I, I usually um, our kids we we actually our kids do a um, an online uh, charter school, um, and so I actually try to allocate, uh, you know, an, an hour or two every afternoon to kind of, um, you know, answer any questions, you know, that they have, you know, from the stuff that they've been working on during the day, and so that takes us to, you know, close to, you know, five-ish o'clock or so, which, you know, then we usually eat fairly basic, um, you know, meat and, and some sort of vegetable, um, and then uh, and then we kind of get into the, the evening hours. Um, we're Pretty busy with 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 Juve and this, this recent product launch. I'll actually at that point I'll try to catch up on any any work related activities, uh, and then I usually try to get get my wife and I try to get in bed by um, you know nine nine thirty and try to try to be asleep by ten, you know, which that you know if I get up around five thirty or six that's usually about a seven or eight hour uh, if I if I if I slept well <laughs> about a seven or eight hour uh, night, which is uh um, which is you know what that's that's sort of what my my average daily routine kind of looks like. Well, I. Yeah. 
Sounds great. Where mm -hmm. do you fit the juve in, morning and afternoon? Uh, yeah, I use I usually do it in the morning, um, just because sometimes the, the day will slip away, and um, I, it's usually if I want to get at least one treatment in, I'll try to get get it in the morning. Um, if not the morning, then I'll then I'll do it in the, uh, the in, in the evening, um, just because I, I do notice. And if I've say for example, I've already done a treatment in the morning. Um, and I, I don't necessarily need to do another one in the, in the evening. Well, my wife and I will often just flip on a, a smaller device in our room and use that for, you know, for lighting at night, um, just because we don't necessarily want to use too much artificial lighting um, um, at, at night, you know, because of the disruption in, in your circadian rhythm. And so we'll often fire on, just use, use a smaller device for illumination in our in our room, and that does that does definitely induce um, sort of a, as a calming and, and relaxing. Uh, it does do, induce like a calming and relaxing state. So um, I'd encourage anyone that's, that has one of our has a smaller device, if, if it's ours, try, try try that at night, and it may, you, you may uh, you may see some nice benefits from that. Great, great. Well, thank you so much for your time. All all the links to Juve and the website and products and stuff will be in the show notes and our emails and all that kind of stuff. But thank you, Scott, for your time. I really appreciate it. I really cannot wait to get my device. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> My name is Dr. Noah DeCoyer, your co-host, and you are listening to the Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast. If you like what you've heard today, please share this to your friends and family. We can also be found on Spotify and YouTube as well. You can sign up for our incredible weekly email at www.beyondyourwildestgenes.com. Thank you, and as my oldest son Hayden says, be awesome and never unawesome. Get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight.